Hello friends, welcome back to another video. If you're new and not subscribed, I'm Kilbame, and you should really think about subscribing to my channel because the greatest things in the world happen when you do that. So subscribe. For today's video, I am going to be doing a Dollar Tree product review. That's so exciting, huh? So because I've been painting a lot more recently, especially with the reverse glass paintings. I was in the Dollar Tree and I saw that they have the crafters square. Is that what it's called? Crafters square. With all like the craft stuff and there's like wood plaques and paint brushes and crayons and stuff. Stuff that you would craft with, right? But there was one little section in particular that kind of caught my attention, and that was the acrylic paint. They have a lot of different brands of acrylic paint. They even had like Crayola washable paint, I think is what it was. But they had some by the Crafter Square. The issue with the Crafter Square is that there wasn't a large selection of paint, I guess. So there was a brand that had a wider variety of acrylic paint and that was the Rich Art Premium Acrylic Paint. So I wanted to try it out because it said it was premium acrylic paint. So it better be premium acrylic paint, you know what I'm saying? So I decided to only use Dollar Tree paints Dollar Tree glass, Dollar Tree brushes, Dollar Tree water even, okay? I did 100% Dollar Tree glass painting of Winnie the Pooh using Dollar Tree acrylic paint to test it out. I've already done a painting of Winnie the Pooh using Apple Barrel and Craftsmart paint, so I have a base idea, a base image of what my glass art looked like before to compare what it looks like with the Dollar Tree paint, okay? So let's see if the Dollar Tree paint is really worth a dollar. Okay, party people, so this is the collection of paint that I picked up. It's by Rich Art. There were different brands of acrylic paint that the Dollar Tree carried, but Rich Art had the biggest variety of colors, so I went with this brand. And the first color we're going to be using is Yellow Oxide, and this is going to be for the shadowing around Pooh's paws and his little eyeballs. So first impressions with this paint. I honestly had no idea what to think about it. The texture of the paint was kind of throwing me off because I put my little detective hat on, but I couldn't figure out exactly what was weird about the texture of the paint. It was kind of too runny while being thick at the same time. However, when I was applying it onto the glass, I didn't have any issues with it. So maybe the runnier thick, weird consistency that it had helped with the painting. I'm not sure. I didn't run into any problems while applying the paint though. It also is important to keep in mind that I am painting on glass and when you do reverse glass paintings like this, you're kind of just globbing the paint on. So this isn't like a total, wow, this paint's the best ever. It could be the best ever for glass paintings, sure. But if you do this on a canvas or a canvas panel board or something, this can be a completely different story because it could be extremely like light coverage, like apple barrel. You have to do multiple layers in order to get the pigment that you want. This is just the experience with glass paintings. Okay, good talk. Now moving on, I used the color Scarlet because that looked like it matched his shirt well and I mixed it with the black rich art so I could get the nice little shadows in his shirt to see the creases and stuff. I didn't have any extraordinary problems mixing the paint. I'm just really bad at mixing paint in general. So this paint was no exception. I struggled with it the same like I struggle with all 
paint that I mix. Then I took the color yellow and mixed it with the color white so I could do the highlights on the honey that he is holding in his paws. And I know this is a really weird thing to bring up, but the little holes for the paint dispensing were two completely different sizes. Like I said, this isn't a big deal. I just wasn't paying attention and accidentally ended up putting a whole bunch of white in the color that I was mixing because before this white bottle, all the other bottles had been those small little holes, so it kind of uh, threw me off a little bit, so just be aware of that if you use these paints. Then I used the color Deep Yellow, and I did mix this with white again very carefully because it came out very fast. And I used this shade that I created myself because I am the artist master, Kayla Bame here, hi. But I did use this lighter shade that I mixed for the highlights on his face, so that was a great time. Then I took the color Cobalt Blue, left it as it is, and I used this color for the little lines in his honey pot. I will say that when the Dollar Tree had all of the rich art paints in stock, they have a lot of different colors because there also is the Dollar Tree brand by Crafters Square. The only reason I didn't use Crafters Square paint is because there were only like maybe six colors, which I get is a thing. You can technically get every color of the rainbow just by mixing the primary colors, but like I said earlier, I suck at mixing paint. So Rich Art had the best variety of colors and they actually had some pretty pretty colors like this cobalt blue was actually very pretty. Then I took the color magenta, mixed this with a little bit of white, and I did that small highlight on his tongue. Then I took the highlight honey color that I had mixed earlier, put some more yellow in it to try and darken it up a bit. However, I will tell you, spoiler alert, it wasn't dark enough and ended up looking exactly the same as the highlights in the honey. Now, that's not the paint's fault, that's just me not being very good at mixing paint. Classic example. And then I tried opening the red paint and oh boy, it splattered all over my painting. Luckily, it didn't get into any of my other colors, but this was a consistent thing with these paints. Every single time I popped the cap off, it liked to spit at me. And I am not the neatest artist in the world. Like, when I am doing a project, oh man, I get paint all over my hands, all over my arms. Like, I get messy. But with these paints, I got a lot messier a lot quicker and I don't know why that is. I think it's because it was spitting at me. Sometimes the paint came out quicker than other bottles. I don't really know. Could be just user error but we're gonna blame it on the paint, okay? So at this point I don't think I was very impressed with the paint. I mean I don't absolutely hate it but if I had the choice between the Rich Art Dollar Tree premium acrylic paint and Apple Barrel and Craftsmart, I'm still going to choose Apple Barrel and Craftsmart. And I know it seems weird saying, oh, for a premium acrylic paint, a dollar is expensive because it's only a dollar. But when you compare it to the stuff that's in Michael's, Joann's, or even Walmart, Apple Barrel paint is only 50 cents. That is half the price of the acrylic paint that you're gonna find in Dollar Tree. So I would put this at the standard of an Apple Barrel or Craftsmart paint because Apple Barrel and Craftsmart, again, that's not the best acrylic paint you're gonna find, but it gets the job done and it works, which is why you use it because it's cheap and it does its job. And if it's at the level of Apple Barrel and Craftsmart, you might as well just get Apple Barrel and Craftsmart because they are significantly cheaper than any paint in the Dollar Tree. 
Now, if you're going to compare it to like real premium fine art paint that you would find in Michaels, like for example, Artist Loft. Artist Loft is the cheapest brand you're gonna find when you go into the fine art section for real paintings that people sell and stuff like that. That, when you compare it, yes, Dollar Tree paint is going to be significantly cheaper than the Artist Loft premium acrylic paint. But just the texture of this paint alone, I would not put this in the same class as an Artist Loft premium acrylic paint. Texture alone, it's just not there. Overall, I didn't have any problems with this paint. It was just kind of weird. Even when it dried, it was weird. I turned it around and I touched it and it had a sticky texture after it dried and it was fully dried. It was just sticky. But would I go to the Dollar Tree and pay a dollar for these paints? No. The bottles are a little bit bigger than Apple Barrel and Craftsmart, so I guess that should count for something, but I would just stick to Apple Barrel at 50 cents. I feel like it works and its texture is not as weird as this texture. Even though that's not a huge deal, there are cheaper options and I would use those cheaper options. And then I flipped it over and oh my gosh, some of the paint smeared off. I don't know how this happened, I don't know why this happened, could have been I didn't wait long enough for the layers to dry, but they appeared dry so I kept on going and this is what happened. But overall, the painting did not turn out bad, okay, the end product was fine even compared to my other one, so I guess if you want to do a pure Dollar Tree glass painting, it is possible. Well, that's it for today's video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave in the comments down below what you think of the idea of Dollar Tree having a premium acrylic paint, okay? I'm not very picky when it comes to paints, but that's because I'm not a professional artist. However, I will be sticking to Apple Barrel and Craft Smart paints, but there is cheaper paint than what's at the Dollar Tree. So if it's gonna be a dollar, I would expect it to be a bit of a higher quality. But I'll see you guys back here next time. Peace.